Hello guys and welcome to my red guide. Today I'm featuring a new way to play red, which will actually be top lore into bottom lore, if you haven't seen that already in the intro. And I will talk about what I'm doing and why I'm doing that. So first of all, red starts with six population already. And the way red starts is your villagers start off as being wounded. So you have more villagers, but all your villagers are wounded, which means they are not as efficient uh, in, in gathering resources as like usual villagers are. So the first thing we do is obviously we build a scout camp and the way red works is we don't have a house, like we can't build houses. And every time we build a healing, it counts as plus one max population. So instead of just building houses, we can just build everything else which is actually a really really nice feature I, fe I feel like so we've got an open ruin we've got wolves and sheep we could colonize the ruin let's actually do that right now um well, let's actually wait a second because i see food here maybe the food is open the food's not open and the lore is not open so I'll have to go for the ruin and since my lore is blocked and my food is blocked I'll have to wait a little bit before taking this so I'll just colonize in order to get happiness I will build a woodcutter in order to maximize my possible population and then I'll just wait. So with Red, Red is a very, very lore greedy clan. Um, you usually want to get your lore ASAP. Um, but the good thing is with this rune, I can clear my lore pretty easily because my chief is not dependent on iron. I can just hire my chief without any iron whatsoever. And that's like really, really nice. So after building the woodcutter, I will actually like not work the woodcutter. I will just gather more food because I need 80 food to colonize this tile. And after this woodcutter, I will build a shaman camp and a longship dock. Usually you would have built a food building by now, but I mean, I can't build a food building, so it is what it is. <laughs> I just have to wait. So let's build a dock here, because a dock takes quite a while to be built. And I will assign this scout to the woodcutter's lodge in order to gather enough wood to build a shaman camp. Also, I'm always going into sharp axes. It's just a really, really good lore overall. And I will get population blocked slightly, but the good thing is it doesn't really matter too much because we have a what's so called population reserve with this clan. And that means those are additional villagers waiting in your town hall will appear as soon as there's room for them. So as soon as this longship dock is finished, there is a villager who will appear instantly. So the next thing you want to do is you want to build a shaman camp on your main tile because that camp is what actually heals you up. And now I'm riding, I will need wildlife for me to clear. Wow, I mean, okay, that one got wounded. <laughs> Just to make sure. So communicate that you wanna wanna clear. And once this is finished, I will finally be able to clear myself. And the great thing is I can actually like clear myself with both my chief and my shaman here. Just to finish that a little bit faster. At this point I wanna build my second woodcutter. Even though I have a shipwreck. Like this spawn is great, apart from me not having my lore instantly. So we always take legions here. 
slaughter the sheep. And now my shaman camp is healing everything. So now it's all about getting the lore, getting the treasure. And actually regarding the food sources, I feel like the best food source is the farm. Then comes the hunter's lodge and then comes the fish. So we want to have like uh, the hunter's lodge here because um, this tile will get heavily upgraded. Like this is the first tile we will upgrade. And um, working fish, fish is really good in winter, but it's not like good in summer, if that makes sense. I, and I really like to have like a big, really, really huge food production in summer and just in general all around the year. So let's build a hunter's lodge. And you can already see like this shaman camp will do the rest here, so I will up, uh, heal up the rest of these guys. And just communicate in general that you wanna... That you wanna like clear together. So the next thing is building a shaman camp in every single tile you have and just communicate overall that some resources belong to him and some resources belong to, to you. Like super important. Also, despite me having uh, one food tile, I will actually build a second food tile. Because one food tile is not enough. Especially in the first uh, in the first winter, so healing fire now heals up my my guys just in time, and I will use the winter to mine my stone and to scout. Just make sure to always get the fire the pyre ignited. Work all the food you can. Build a shaman camp on every single tile, like I said. And this is how we roll. So you gotta like communicate with your um, with your clear clan who's taking what. So you wanna usually overwork in November. This overwork is a little bit late, but that's fine. And since my my guys are not wounded anymore, they will generate tons of resources, which is really really nice. So next thing is actually mining the stone after my overwork is done and I think I can overwork with sailors here since I have like such such great food production and like I said you wanna you wanna work the stone you wanna work the the scouts and as soon as I hit like minus minus one, I will actually just go into overwork mode again, despite it being winter. So the next thing is after mining the stone, going into overcrowding, building a second food building on here and upgrading the food building. So I will just do that. So I will work the stone. And once I am like starving here, I will overwork again. So let's overwork, we are plus one again. And the great thing is because of the overwork, I can like sustain this even in winter, which is amazing. 
So let's just farm these guys as well. Let's just heal up again. And like you like you can see, I can overwork permanently. Which is amazing. Because it generates tons of tons of resources. So building a second food building, building a second dock here, even though I don't work the dock right now. And maybe I think I will work the lore here actually. Because having having additional lore is amazing. Just have to remember, always shaman up all of your tiles. Like shaman camps are really really important. So let's do this, just so that I don't starve. And even though I get like two guys to die, which will be the sailors because this, because the sailors are not like getting healed the same way as the other guys are getting healed, uh, overworking is completely fine because it just generates so much lore. And that's what I'm looking for. So let's go for the shaman camp here. My dock is finished. Let's work the dock. And after that I will upgrade all of my food buildings. These guys, guys then can go there. And having dwarves on map is amazing because if you don't have like the, the purification pyre gauge anymore, you can just go into the dwarves and maybe like go and brawl the dwarves instead. So now it's minus nine. Let's not overwork right now. Because we don't want any people to die here. And four dying is actually all right. And Happy is doing an amazing, an amazing job at letting me some of these kills. Not all of them, I don't need all of them, but some of them. And I see a doggy here. And now it's just a crazy amount of food production I have. Like, crazy amount of production overall. So let's assign the sailors, mine the second stone, tell the team that there are elves on map, and at this point I think I can maybe even scout the dwarves. So let's mine the second stone right now, let's defend the elf. Looks like he's entering here. And this alpha attack is actually amazing. So let's heal up here. And once I hit Yurts with Carpentry, I can upgrade the rest. So you can start upgrading without Yurts. But uh, once you hit like a carpentry with yurts, your upgrading it will just be absolutely insane. Like look at this, crazy, absolutely crazy. And now I can overwork a spell. And once you have like these buildings upgraded, you are basically online. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna forge. So I will build a forge, and I only want to build, uh, forge like two things. I want to forge my sailors, because Kuhn's income is the most important. And I want to forge my shamans. And that's it. 
Also, I can assign another one to the food. And at this point, you will start upgrading your camps. And the great thing about uh, about the red here, you can actually defend your allies. Ah, yikes, he took it. That's not great. So you want the last hits, uh, obviously, because of the purification pyre. Sometimes your team will maybe steal them away. That happens, it's okay. Not the best, but what can you do? But you always want the purification pyre like lit. If that's possible. But yeah, this eagle is just doing an amazing job at that. Getting babysitted like crazy. But yeah, at this point I will forge my sailors, I will forge my shamans. Popping out the sailors because they are wounded. Problem. Always like signaling that he can take the rest. It's really important as well. And at this point it's just like crazy snowball for the rat. It's even better because I have like a lot of access to stone here right now. So after forging the shamans you are basically ready. Now the only thing you need is building more camps. Don't forget to build a camp on the new stone tile. Because you need camps everywhere. And that's it. Your build is finished. For me as well. Because spectrals give a lot of uh, purification pyre value. So I've got mutual interests now with Hubert. I will soon be able to befriend the dwarves as well, like at least 30%. And the reason why I have not like uh, instantly deleted my forge here is because I wasn't, uh, I needed more, more maximum population from this building. That's why I did that. And I will turn this guy into a shaman. And overworked again. And at this point, you can just pick feeling safe, and all of you guys will be like really, really happy. So let's defend the event. Event means that I get my purification pyre online again.
and be careful to only convert guys who are wounded because of uh, enrollment, which means that your wounded units cost minus 30% coins to train as a military unit. So for example, I could train like this guy, but I didn't want to train this guy because this guy wasn't wounded. So I can destroy this because I have enough population reserves and now I can tell my team that I am ready to convert here. Also I really like to build a market uh, marketplace to just work a little bit more of coins. And now I can just keep overworking all the time. And the purification pyres just will do the rest. And one thing I really like is entering the tile, killing one dwarf and then going back out of the tile again. Because that gives you both military XP plus your purification pyre. go out again, upgrade more, and now we can convert more, make sure to only convert the wounded guys. And once you have like blood ties, blood ties is extremely strong lore, you are basically ready for the fight. So let's do this. Go after feast and in uh, 802 you should, you should be ready. Also I am kind of population blocked, which is fine. If I hit like 8, that would be bad though. I don't want to hit 8. But yeah, at this point your shamans are... Really, really, really strong. You can just keep overworking all the time. Stop the sailors. And just go. Make sure to only convert the wounded ones. Because wounded ones cost less. And then you're ready. And that's your basic red build. Also, I should be able to always overwork here. Let's see if I'm right about this.
make sure to get your chief in the back to heal up. And even though my chief dies here, I should be fine. I really want Milstead for the fight. So let's do that. And my shamans should just be way too tanky for this fight. And that's GG. And the great thing is after decolonizing, I can just heal up everything. Yeah, that's the power of the rat. I hope you guys enjoyed that guide and I really really look forward to seeing more rats in, in ranked gameplay. Because let me tell you, rat is so fun to play. And it's so strong too. Especially if your clear clan player knows what to do. And that's GG.